Would you not agree that this pate su pate decorated vase is a most beautiful and exquisite example of this most elaborate and difficult form of ceramic decoration? It was executed at the Mittens factory in England by the master and perfecter of the technique, French ceramic artist Marc Louis Sonon, in about 1885. Um, pate su pate which means paste on paste in French, uh, was adopted to describe this method of porcelain decoration, in which a relief design is created on an unfired, unglazed porcelain body by adding uh, successive layers of white porcelain slip or liquid clay with a brush. The technique was first employed by the late Ming Dynasty Chinese potters, experimenting with the bowl technique of decorating with brushed slip clay, an example of which can be seen on this Seligan vase. Seligan describes the type of reduction iron oxide glaze that the Chinese potters perfected many centuries ago. However, the technique which we call pate su pate was introduced in Europe uh, about 1850 at the Sèvres factory in France. They were trying to reproduce the decorative technique from a Chinese vase in their museum, but misinterpreting the vase, the experiment took them along an altogether different path from the Chinese potters. No notice was taken in the case of the Chinese vase that the Seligan glaze was neatly laid between the raised white decoration and did not lie under the reliefs, whereas in pate su pate the reliefs are done over the coloured clay body of the piece, which gave, uh, which in fact gave a much more pleasant effect. As I mentioned earlier, the task of developing and perfecting pate su pate was given to the French ceramic artist and designer Marc Louis Solon at Sèvres. Several magnificent pieces were created by him uh, until Monsieur Salon was forced to flee his native country during the Franco Prussian War of 1870. And he sought refuge in England, where he established contact with Colin Minton Campbell of Mittens Limited who had a, a, a history of employing foreign artists and he was employed there for many years bringing his superior skills to ultimate perfection with many of the wonderful pieces that were produced at Minton. During that time the Patis of Pate technique spread and was adopted in several other English factories and European factories, namely Meissen and Meissen and Limoges, and Royal Vienna to name a few Limoges. Uh, they perfected the technique and some extraordinarily beautiful wares were created. The technique was also developed in the United States at the Rookwood factory in Cincinnati, Ohio, and University City Pottery uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, where another famous French potter from Sèvres, Taxile Maximum Dote, also used the pâté su pâté technique. But the time-consuming manner of the work the high level of skill and artistic ability needed to create these pate su pate embellishments and the technical demands required for the firing of these pieces, leading to very high prices demanded for the finished works. This resulted in a demise of the process early in the 20th century. There is no other comparable process of decoration to pate su pate. Wedgwood jasperware may closely resemble it, but as you may well know, it is done by adding white reliefs onto a coloured ground 
by mechanical means. Each part of the given model is pressed separately into a plaster mould and then attached by slip to the surface of the piece to be decorated. Therefore, they can be reproduced in unlimited numbers, but Pate Supate is strictly original and a repetition of it could only be made by the artist who has executed the first one. So how was Pate sur Pate done? In this slim volume in the Minton archives, Marc Louis Solon writes uh, about the early history of Pate sur Pate and how he came to devote a greater part of his life to the work in England. It's a fantastically informative record of this process of decoration, containing both personal reminiscences or, and technical notes from an artist who uninterruptedly practiced it during the lapse of half a century. I found a few surprises there. As a practicing potter for almost 40 years, I have a fair knowledge of how clay behaves, but I never worked in porcelain, uh, so I never attempted pâté sur pâté. But insti instinct told me that it would have been done wet on wet, or wet slip applied to leather clay hard surfaces. I was surprised to learn from Monsieur Solon that the porcelain body of the pot was hardened, not bisque fired, but hardened, and the slip of the same composition as the body was applied, and then as Solon said, the only rule is to let it dry before adding the next application. In this way, no flaking of the decoration occurred. So I then set about to experiment with this idea. First of all, I prepared the slip, and it was passed through a very fine sieve. Then I separated some of it and coloured it to prepare the ground for the decoration. I applied the coloured slip to a small slab of wet clay uh, and after this it was allowed to dry then I put it in the oven to harden it. I applied in slip by brush a simple floral motif. And uh, then I left it to dry and uh, as you can see there is definitely no sign there of any flaking uh, of this decoration on the surface of this slab of clay. And now let's conclude by looking at some examples of Pate su Pate from several of the potteries that perfected this most inspiring form of ceramic decoration in the latter parts of the 19th century and the early periods of the 20th century. And I think it needs to be mentioned that there is a triumph of excellence, satisfaction and achievement when everything goes to plan. But there can be many disappointments along the way, as Monsieur Solon pointed out in his excellent article. The wonderful effects of dimension and translucency which are achieved in pâté sur pâté decoration only become apparent after the final firing of the piece and mistakes will only make their appearance after the firing when it is too late to make any alterations. Thank you so much for watching.